Welcome to the First Beat Sports Cloud. Let's get to know our cloud-based system better and explore how to use it. You will find out how to navigate through the dashboard, explore the basics of session analysis, learn how to use weekly reporting, manage teams, export data, and adjust different settings. After your purchase, you'll receive a registration email, register, log in, and let our setup wizard guide you through setting up your organization and team in the sports cloud. When you're all done, you'll be guided to the First Beat Sports dashboard, where you'll see your team's training diary. At the top of the dashboard, you have the calendar, which allows you to easily navigate through the training history. To give you more context, training measurements are represented in light blue, quick recovery measurements in green, and stress and recovery measurements done with the bodyguard are in purple. Games or races are highlighted with black borders. Below the calendar, you'll find the daily training chart. From the top right corner of the chart, you can select which metrics you want to view. Again, game, race days are highlighted with black borders to facilitate data analysis. Under the daily chart, you'll find the specific team sessions. You can create a new sessions from the plus symbol or add manual exercises if needed. Let's take a look at how to create a session and how to add a manual exercise. In the session management view, you can adjust the start and end time of the session by moving the slider or by typing in the time. You can also give the session a title. Most commonly used titles include Game Day 2, Game Day 1, Game, Game Day Plus 1, or you can categorize it into training types, such as on-court training or strength training. Next, select the sport and training type. Selecting game as the training type will highlight the day with black borders in the daily chart. Lastly, select the athletes who participated in the session. Save the session from the upper right corner. You can also create sessions while live monitoring on the Coach app. It's recommended to create sessions to have highly annotated data to facilitate analysis. If your athlete hasn't measured a training session for some reason, you can add a manual exercise to maintain accurate training volume, acute load, chronic load, and ACWR. Fill in the basic information and select the intensity for the training. The system automatically calculates the TRIMP based on the intensity and the duration. You can also select the intensity or TRIMP individually for each athlete. After you have created a session, either live or post, you can move on to analyze it. Start by selecting the session by clicking on the session title. Underneath, you will find the session chart. In the session chart, you have the data displayed for all athletes that participated in the session and their averages. You can change the metrics you want to look at from the upper right corner of the session chart, as well as change how time is displayed. HR max percentage nicely displays, for example, the recovery reactions between intense bouts of exercise. Whereas from the movement intensity, you can see what kind of external intensities are achieved in the session. Below the chart, you will find those orange bars, which indicate the laps that you have created live. You can create laps as well in the post analysis by clicking on the session chart and sliding to the right. With this tool, you can also zoom in to the session chart. Click on Add New Lap to create a lap. Adjust start time and end time if needed and give the lap a name. If you have pre-created laps, you can select one from the list. It's recommended to keep the naming quite compact to avoid ending up with hundreds of different laps. Finally, select the athletes that participated in that lap. Under the session chart, 
you will find the summary section. Here, the averages of the whole team are displayed to give you a quick overview of the session characteristics. You can change the metrics by clicking on them. Underneath it, you can fill in some notes about the session. The ranking view is the place where most of our customers do the session-specific analysis. In the ranking view, you will find the average values for the whole session and for each lap that you have created, either live or post. It's recommended to start the analysis by having a quick look at the averages for each lap. For example, how does the load or intensity of the first period compare to the load of the third period on a team level? How demanding was the warm-up for the team? Are players recovering as well in the last 10 minutes of the third period as in the last 10 minutes of the first period when looking at the heart rate recovery? After you have gotten an overview of the team results, you can move on to analyzing individual values. Do this by clicking on the arrow and you get to see the values of individual athletes, either for the whole session or for specific laps. What kind of load distribution do we have between athletes? Were the goalies loaded a lot more during the warm-up than field players? On the left side, you can tick the boxes to highlight athletes' data on the session chart. This allows you to easily compare their internal reactions and the external work done with each other. How did player A recover between shifts compared to player B? How is the HR of player C ramping up during the submaximal test compared to player D? Finally, to use the gathered data as much as possible, we have created automated PDF reports, which will be automatically emailed after the session to the shareholders. Coaches will receive automatically the group training report and athletes training report from their own data. These can be downloaded or emailed by clicking on the PDF icon. If your athletes are training more than once, we have a summary view for the given day that sums up all training data from that day. In the upper part, you have the training effect, training status, ACWR, and quick recovery averages for the whole team to give a quick overview of the team's status for the given day. And underneath it, you will see the same kind of ranking view as in the session overview. The data in the dashboard can be viewed on a team basis, group position basis, or on an individual basis. To change the view, go to the team selection and select on which level you would like to analyze the data. Click the menu on the left-hand side and select the reporting. As in the dashboard view, you can easily move back and forth in your team's training history. The team training history shows the team's average training load over the previous 12 weeks. This means you can see the team's current status and how you got there to understand more about the context of the current numbers. For example, did we reach the current position with a consistent gradual building of training loads or was it a very quick increase? Acute load is the seven-day total training load calculated using TRIMP. The balanced range is calculated using the chronic 28-day training load. Use this as a guide for the acute load that can be tolerated by your team. By staying within the range, your training load is not increasing too quickly. If you wish to maintain current volume, do not drop below the range. But if you are aiming for a deload or recovery week, you can plan to be below the range. These charts provide a more detailed view of the selected seven day period highlighted in blue on the team training history chart. It allows you to analyze the distribution of training load within the group and see whether most individuals were close to the group average or if there was a greater range of individual values. It helps you to quickly see if some athletes responded differently to the training than others. In the first column, you'll find the QRT seven day average so you can evaluate how each athlete is coping with their current training load. In the next column, you'll see the current acute load compared to the highest recent value rounded to the next 100. 
the highest recent value is used for scaling of the bar below. The weekly change in acute load is the difference between the selected report date and the value seven days ago. The arrow shows the direction and magnitude of the change in acute load from seven days ago. Next, you'll find the acute to chronic workload ratio. It indicates how quickly training load is increasing or decreasing. And finally, you'll see the mini graphs. These provide a more detailed view of what the individual has done over the previous seven days. For example, did all athletes follow the same load programming, high, high, low, low, or are there some athletes that differ from the programming that you have created? As in the dashboard, you have the option to analyze data either on a team, group, or individual basis to provide you with as insightful data as possible. To streamline your workflow and facilitate data sharing with other coaching staff, we have implemented automated weekly report sharing. To automate this process, click on the share button in the upper right corner. Select the coaches you want to receive the report, choose the weekdays they should receive it, specify the time, and indicate from which teams. For instance, goalie coaches can receive the report from all goalies of the club once a week or every day at 6 a.m. to ensure they have it when they begin planning their day. Additionally, you can send the current report to an email outside of your organization to share the data, for example with scouts, national teams, and federations. If you need to make changes to your team, you can do so under the Team Management section. In Team Management, you can add or delete athletes from your team and create new athlete profiles. Click on Athlete Management to see all athletes on your account. Create a new athlete profile. It's recommended to divide your athletes into groups for more insightful analyses. Most of our customers divide them by playing position, but you can divide them however it fits you best. It's recommended to grant your athletes access to the First Beat Sports Athlete app to allow you to monitor them remotely. If your athletes have a Garmin device, they can connect their Garmin Connect account to our database. All training data from their Garmin Connect account will be synced to First Beat Sports. With the data export feature, you can export all your data into an Excel file. First, select the team, group, or athlete whose data you want to export. Then specify the time period, measurement type, and export type. You can change your team's HR zones and colors from the settings. However, any changes to the zones won't be applied to existing athletes, so you'll need to update them individually. In the settings, you can also enable the API for other service providers. Finally, on the left side, you will also find a link to our Help and Learning Center if you encounter problems or want to learn more. The glossary provides short information about our metrics, and the first beat shop is there if you need to purchase additional hardware. On the right side, when clicking on your profile picture, you'll find the possibility to edit your profile, account information, add coaches, access the setup wizard, download the app, and log out. From your profile, you can edit from which teams you would like to receive training reports automatically to your email and from which athletes you would like to receive the stress and recovery reports. You can do the same for other coaches under coach management. To add a new team, click on the team logo and create a new team. To upload stress and recovery reports to Sports Cloud, click on the upload symbol and select from which device you would like to upload the data. With the stress and recovery report, you can analyze the recovery status of the athlete, sleep duration and quality, and why the player is recovering or not recovering. One crucial part of data collection is data quality. Our data quality is the best on the market, but sometimes it can happen that the data quality isn't that good. In these cases, it's good to have the data quality indication available 
for confident decision making. You can access this info from the measurement list in the dashboard. In the measurement list, you can also change the measurement settings. For example, if you have recorded a training on the wrong profile. Lastly, on the right lower corner, you find the get started button. It will guide you through the basics of the system. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at customercare at firstbeat.com. That's it. Now you are ready to use FirstBeat Sports Cloud.